to the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl as a part of Capital One Bowl Mania on this beautiful New Year's Day at Camping World Stadium. Our matchup from the Big Ten, number 17, Iowa against the 21st ranked Volunteers of Tennessee. Hi, everybody. Dave Fleming, Brock Osweiler, Kayla Burton's with us as well. Happy New Year, Rose Parade, beautiful weather, full day of college football. That's a recipe for a great New Year's Day. Let's get right into the matchup, Brock. It's an interesting one. What a weird year for Iowa. All the ups and downs, and here they are with 10 wins, a chance for their 11. Well, weird to say the least. It was really two completely different stories when you talk offensive and defensive football for the Iowa Hawkeyes on offense. It really couldn't have gone any worse. It started with starting quarterback Cade McNamara going down early in the season with an ACL injury and then things just spiraled for there led to one of the one of the nation's worst offensive outputs but on the defensive side of the ball led by Phil Parker and a host of all Americans and all Big Ten players they had a top five defense and they really carried the Hawkeye football team amazing last in the country in yards per game and yet 10 wins Kirk Ferentz if he wins this game he will pass Joe Paterno most Bowl wins as a Big Ten head coach. That's pretty remarkable as well. So a chance for 11 wins. Tennessee, Brock, had 11 last year. So maybe you could say a little step back this season. Josh Heupel, though, is convinced that the pieces are in place to take this program to the next level, and we get to see a big one of those pieces make his first career start, the true freshman at quarterback, Nico Iamaliava. Yeah, and a lot of people are very excited about this quarterback, and rightfully so. Listen, a five-star prospect from Southern California, he's the total package. He can beat you with his arm. He's smooth with his legs. He's fast and there's a big reason why this Tennessee Vols football team's excited and we get the first preview with Nico making his first career start today. So Joe Milton, the starter, opts out, and Tennessee fans are pumped to see the kid play here today. The Cheez-It Citrus Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania opening kick coming up after these messages. Coverage provided by Goodyear. Celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. Just a spectacular New Year's Day here in Orlando. Good crowd. Josh Heupel, the head coach of the Vols, his third year in charge. 26 and 12. Has a chance for 20 wins between last year and this year. If his team from the SEC can take down the Big Ten Iowa. We've heard Rocky Top playing in the stadium all morning long. Kirk Ferentz's Iowa Hawkeyes team, meanwhile, looking for their 11th win, coming off a loss against Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game where their defense, I mean, Brock described it in our open, Iowa's defense had a great year. They held Michigan to 213 yards in the Big Ten Championship game. That's a Michigan team we're going to see in a few hours play in a playoff game in the Rose Bowl. And yet their offense could not score a point. Tennessee won the toss. They have deferred. So that Iowa offense, which has had such a tough time all year, is going to come out on the field to start this Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. These bowl games, Brock, you figure special teams can always play a part. Special teams, defense, where can you pick up an extra possession, maybe an extra touchdown? These teams have been off for a month. Strap it up. It's going to be a fun one today. Josh. Turbyville will kick it deep. Caden Weegan, who's a really good return man, is near the goal line. That one's going to go out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And so the Iowa offense, the beleaguered Iowa offense, takes the field to start this game. They're starting quarterback Deacon Hill, who began his career. He's a California kid, but he came to the Big Ten right away. Played at Wisconsin, never even threw a pass in three years with the Badgers. He transfers to Iowa, was the backup to Cade McNamara, who transferred from Michigan. McNamara got hurt. Deacon Hill took over. The stats weren't great, but the record was pretty good. He started the final eight games of the year. Hawkeyes went 6-2. I mean, those are not the kind of numbers you see very often in college football. Below 50% completion, five touchdowns, six interceptions. Can they be a little bit better here today? They're going to play fake on the first play from scrimmage, and Hill will throw short and complete his first pass of this cheese that such a bowl for a gain of four. You know, you talk about quarterback Deacon Hill, and although the numbers don't look great, He's sub 50% when he's talked about completions. He's thrown more interceptions than touchdowns. But the thing that he's done, he's won football games. And he's kept this offense in a position to do that by the great defensive play by the Hawkeyes. 
I mean, you figure if Iowa just had had even close to an average offense this year, uh, their defense historically good this season. Hand off, right side run, and absolutely nowhere to go for LeSean Williams. It's going to be third down. Third down, and this is the distance that Iowa Hawkeyes, they don't want to be in. They want to have the option to run the football on third down. They want to be in third and two, third and three or less. This is an obvious passing situation. I'm anxious to see what offensive coordinator Brian Ferentz has for the first third down of the game. You saw that third down percentage. We're not going to emphasize every number because they're all ugly on offense for Iowa. It gets a little repetitive. Keep an eye at the top of your screen, James Pierce. He's a sack artist for the Tennessee Vols. One of the best pass rushers in the SEC. Hill is going to go down. And Pierce was one of the volunteers who was in there. He had time to throw. That'll be a loss of seven. Elijah Herring is going to get credit for the sack as fourth down. Well, Elijah Herring, he's a monster in the middle, playing middle linebacker for the Tennessee Vols on the delayed blitz. Came from the middle of the field. He's the leading tackler for the Vols, but he's great in pass rush as well, as you saw in that last play. This Tennessee defense, I'll tell you what, they're tough when it comes to obvious passing situations. Well, it got said more often than with any team in the country this year. Iowa will punt. And their All-American punter, Tory Taylor, kind of a wobbly end-over-end -end punt, but takes a great Iowa bounce on this turf. All the way. They love the punt game in Iowa City. That's sort of par for the course with the Hawkeyes. That was a good punt with that extra bounce. 56 yards or so. All right, now we get excited. Nico Iamaliava, one of the top prospects, regardless of position, certainly one of the top quarterback prospects in the country. Last year, bowl prepped with the Vols. So he's been on campus for a year now. He played a little bit this season, but really not much. Today is his first start. He is the future of the program, and he has got a world of talent. His first snap as the starter, and he play fakes and dumps it short along the right side, wide open. Jacob Warren, one of his tight ends, for a nice gain of eight to start his starting career. Yeah, great call by Josh Heifel, using a little play action, getting the tight end out to the flat route. And now the quick tempo of Tennessee. That is Josh Heupel's offense. Get some yards, go fast, make it tough for the defense to get organized. They hand off for a gain of four and a Tennessee first down. You talk about that tempo for the Iowa Hawkeyes, they're going to have to be extremely disciplined with their eyes. Now back to pass on first down. Ian Aliava, who's got some wheels. Penalty flag thrown. Good scramble there, and he got 12, maybe 13 yards, but it could be that this one's coming back. And I believe it is. Holding. Offense. Number 78. 10-yard penalty. First down. So the hold negates the scramble. That is a part of his skill set. He's a good running quarterback, they think. Yeah, the holding call coming on left guard. Ollie Lane. You're going to see here at the top of your screen. When Iamale Ava goes to take off and run, which was a good decision, the left guard wasn't ready for it. When you feel that defense alignment rip away, you have to let go. So first and 20, and now another flag. This is going to be movement against Tennessee. Ball start. Offense. Number 63. Five-yard penalty. First down. Now you never know, a new quarterback, different cadence, different sort of way of getting organized at the line of scrimmage. No question, but definitely not the way you want to start with a true freshman quarterback making his first career start. He had a great first play, little RPO to the flat. Since then, it's been two negative plays. Hand it off. Straight ahead run for Dylan Sampson. He gets four. Sampson getting his first career start as well. The top two Tennessee running backs. Tennessee, many more opt-outs and portal losses than Iowa, but still most of their top players are here playing in this game. Play fake to Sampson. Yamaliava throws all the way across the field and a completion. Good open field tackle. Chaz Nimrod with the catch again of eight. They did blow the whistle. It'll be third down. That's a big league throw by the true freshman quarterback working a stop route all the way across the field, showing off his accuracy early in the football game. Great read and progression by Yamaliava. So now third and 11.
Tennessee's offense was erratic this year. Sometimes good, sometimes struggled. Gets away, not for long. He goes down, a sack for the Hawkeyes defense. And it's going to be fourth down. Joe Evans, who's had really, in some ways, a legendary career at Iowa, comes up with a sack. I think it's safe to say that Joe Evans is Mr. Iowa football. You're going to see here, coming off the left edge of the line of scrimmage, just beating the right tackle early in the football game. Nico not able to get away from it. Joe Evans, somebody who's sixth all-time in sacks for the Hawkeyes, and he started his career as a walk-on. They play in his final game today, so Tennessee punts, and that's a shank. Off the side of the foot and out of bounds. The punt game so far has definitely favored the Hawkeyes. No score, but I was going to have good field position for their offense when we come back to Orlando. A very Iowa start to this Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. No score, just a few minutes in. But the punt game gains ground for the Hawkeyes. 11th year in their program's history, but 10 wins. They have a chance to make it an 11-win season with a Citrus Bowl victory here today. 5-1 and one in close games, and that's the formula for Kirk Ferentz. Everybody knows the offense struggle. Keep it close, win games late. Third Big Ten West Championship. They held Michigan's offense in check in that Big Ten Championship game. Just just could not put points on the board themselves. They start in Tennessee territory here, and a quick hitter out to the right side, and then out into the open with some quickness in the open field for Caleb Brown, who they say is emerging as a playmaker again of 11. Great job on the slip screen by the Iowa Hawkeyes, getting it out to Caleb Brown, who's a former running back, transferred over from Ohio State, now playing at the wide receiver position. He's very dynamic with the football in his hands. Great job by the tight end and offensive line getting out in front on that screen play. But he's the one guy that Kirk Ferentz said, okay, huh, is there a player who's really coming on? Or can we? Get? And he said Caleb Brown's getting a lot better. Under center, Hill is going to hand it off. Straight ahead run. And just not much room there. A gain of one. Joshua Josephs in on the tackle. This is, this is the football game, though, that Iowa wants to play. It's ball control, complementary football, protect the football and offense, run it, little play action, play some good defense, play that field position game. This is their formula. The one part of that that's been shaky lately is the kicking game. And it, it, it concerned Kurt Ferentz coming into this one. Drew Stevens has just not been ultra-reliable lately. Part of the field where you start to think about getting some points on the board. Hill, another handoff, left side this time, a little more room, leaning inside the 30, a gain of six for LeSean Williams to set up third down and short. Uh, great job by the Iowa Hawkeyes at the offensive front, really starting with center Logan Jones and the left guard right there, Rusty Feth, number 60, great job on the double team, and then the left guard Feth working up to the second level, getting a hat on the linebackers. It's not easy to run against Tennessee. They have some big dudes on the defensive line. Absolutely. They're 320, 330, 340 inside. Great work by the offensive line for the Hawkeyes. Third and three, kind of figure power against power. A little jet sweep action to get the first down. Nico Ragaini, who already has a catch now with a carry, gain of five, first and ten. Well, when you're running the football inside well, what you get is you get linebackers with their eyes caught in the backfield on the running back, which is what allows Nico Ragaini to capture that edge and pick up the first down. Under eight minutes to go, first quarter. No score, but Iowa now inside the Tennessee 25, first and ten. Williams again deep in the backfield. Now he leaves the backfield, so it's empty. And the sophomore quarterback, Deacon Hill, back in the shotgun all alone. Looking to throw. Throws. Knocked down incomplete. Well, if I'm Deacon Hill, that's not the side of the field I'm going to throw to. Over there is cornerback Gabe Judy Lally. He's really one of two day one starters for this Tennessee defense that's playing in the secondary today. They're down three starters. Playing up top on the field is cornerback number 18, Ricky Gibson. He's a true freshman making his first career start. That's the guy that I want to attack in man-to-man -man situations. It's the position group for Tennessee that's been most decimated by losses coming into this bowl game, the secondary. Can Iowa take advantage? Caleb Johnson in for the first time in the backfield. He'll get the carry. 
Coming around the left corner, Johnson. Nice job to fall forward inside the 20, and he got six, close to seven yards. Why is it so remarkable that Iowa has 10 wins? And look at the other team's second lowest points per game or, or fourth lowest points per game. The other teams in that neighborhood, 1-11, 4-8, 2-10, 2-10. Iowa averaging 16-plus points per game, 10-3. and three. The coaching job Kirk Ferentz has done this season in his 25th season at Iowa, arguably his best. So third and four. And they'll hand the ball off straight ahead and get the first down inside the five. Terrell Washington, the freshman running back in on third down. It'll be first and goal. And that's the Iowa Hawkeye formula. Watch this right side of the offensive line. Watch them work a double team, get up to the second level. It is just so impressive, the space that they can create, especially with how big the defensive front is for the Tennessee Volunteers. This Iowa Hawkeye offense, this is the best they've looked in weeks. Eighth play of the drive coming up here. It's first and goal. You got Kamari Moulton now in the game in the backfield. They'll give it to him. He spins away from the first would-be tackler and did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Number 27, Brock's already talked about him. James Pierce Jr. Run defense is not his strength. A great pass rusher. Yeah, James Pierce just unblocked there coming off the edge. I'm not sure if that's a missed assignment by the Hawkeyes or if they were trying to put him in conflict with the speed sweep. Nevertheless, great play by Pierce. He may not have gotten the tackle, but he blew up the play. So now second to goal, Leshawn Williams back in alongside Hill. And Williams will get it, trying that right side. Nowhere to go. Third and goal coming up. That's a good job up front. Number 21, Amari Thomas, defensive tackle for the Tennessee Vols. Six foot four, 320 pounds, getting off the double team there, doing a great job of using his hands. Long drive. This will be the 10th play coming up. Caleb Johnson in the backfield on third and goal. If I'm Deacon Hill, I'm expecting pressure here by the Vols. Hill. A lot of time. Throws end zone and intercepted. Andre Turntine comes up with the pick. So Iowa marches all the way down the field and Deacon Hill throws the interception. The Hawkeyes get nothing out of that drive. What a play by the safety Turntine. Does a great job as the rap players, basically in a spy position in that free safety. Does a great job of reading the quarterback's eyes. Huge turnover for the balls. The Cheese It Citrus Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Cheese It, official sponsor of the college football playoff. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? Players on both sides seem to have thoroughly enjoyed the build-up to this Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. And they have consumed a lot of Cheez-Its <laughs> in the lead-up to this game. Tennessee's defense comes up with a huge turnover in the end zone. Iowa playing the field position game like they like to do. Got all the way down, first and goal. And on third and goal through an interception. So Tennessee gets it back starting at the 20. And a little shovel pass incomplete. Sampson had a chance to catch it and go. And I think the pass was there. He just dropped it. Pass. Pass. Down, down. Yeah, that was a great action by quarterback Nico. Dylan Sampson just needs to keep his eyes on the football and haul that one in before he takes off and runs. There was a lot of space for a big play to be had. And he prides himself on his ability to catch and run, not just a pure running back. Sampson's going to carry it left side here, and there's some of that burst. He'll get the first down. Nice run for Dylan Sampson. They are very excited about him. He's going to be featured a lot more next season, you figure, with no Jalen Wright, no Jabari Small. Got 12 on first down. Quick tempo. The Amaliava play fake. And the true freshman going to throw it to the sideline. Wide open for the catch and the midfield. Never... 
Ramel Keaton with the catch and run, gain of 18. What a great job by the true freshman quarterback, working all the way to number three in his progression, all the way left to right across the field. Saw a quick shot there. Nico's got a lot of family members who are here watching him make his first career start. A handoff on first down, gains two. I'll tell you what, I know we're early in this ball game right now, but I am super yeah, impressed with Nico Iamaleava, how he's played, the throws he's, throws he's made, and made a couple plays with his legs as well. I mean, we would try to identify them all, but there are like 30 of them in the stands across the middle. He zipped one in there. Good coverage in his way. It's going to be third down. Let's go down to Kayla. Well, guys, Nico Ilamaliava was telling me earlier that he just wants to go out there and keep it simple. He's very confident in his ability. You talk about his family. He's one of seven siblings. All the family is here today, including his mom, who had stage four breast cancer. And he said that really took a toll on his family. Thankfully, she's a lot healthier. She's out here supporting him. He's looking to do his thing in his first career start. Third and eight. For Yamaliava and the Tennessee offense just across midfield. Pressure. He dumps it and it's incomplete. He took a big hit. It'll be fourth down. Iowa brought the pressure right up the middle and got to him. Great job on the pressure by middle linebacker Jay Higgins coming right in the middle of the screen. He's unblocked. It's a screenplay. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. But a young running back should give a little bit of a shoulder as he's going through the line of scrimmage on that linebacker just to buy his quarterback an extra half second so he can get that throw off in an accurate way. Instead, the pressure worked. It's fourth down. Legion back to return. Jackson Ross looking for a better punt after his first one was, what, 26 yards? No fair catch. That was dangerous. Inside the 10 and a great special teams tackle for the balls. 41-yard punt, no return. Back to Orlando right after this. All right, let's take a look at our defensive spotlight brought to you by ReliaQuest. Huge interception for Tennessee last time Iowa had the ball. Well, free safety Andre Turntine in the middle of your screen does a tremendous job in a man-free coverage of reading the quarterback's eyes and making a play on the ball. That's a play that quarterback Deacon Hill needs to continue moving through his progression. When you have three points in your back pocket as a quarterback in the low red zone, it is paramount to protect the football. Tennessee needed that one, too. Their defense has been struggling lately in the red zone. They'd allowed eight straight touchdowns when opponents had been in the red zone before that interception. Now first down Iowa. And having some success on the ground, that gives them a little breathing room, a, a six-yard run. I was doing a fantastic job on the ground early in this football game. That front five up front, they're just really in sync, led by center Logan Jones, who's finally back from an injury that he was battling all, all the month of November, was back for the Big Ten Championship. And you can definitely see he's healthy again today. Huge part of their offensive line. Second down, another handoff. He's not going to get there. Maybe a yard. Elijah Herring with another tackle. We've already seen him make a couple plays for Tennessee. And he might be hurting a little bit. Uh, in fact, that's not Herring who's grabbing that shoulder. That's the big guy, Omari Thomas. Seems to be okay. That's good. That's a huge piece of that defensive front for the balls. He did a great job on that last play of defeating the double team, making the play in the backfield. They love that guy. The volunteers do. His defensive coordinator, Tim Banks, told us that kid could be president of the United States someday. Could be the biggest president in U.S. history, that's for sure. Hill, lots of time across the middle, and the pass was dropped. Caleb Brown, maybe a little behind him, but he had a chance to make that catch and did not, so it's fourth down. Uh, Caleb Brown, the young player that the coaching staff is just so excited about getting thrust into action today. That's a play that he has to make. Deacon Hill did a tremendous job of navigating the pocket, keeping his eyes down the field. He worked all the way back to number three in his progression and put the football exactly where it needed to be. Some records were set the last time Torrey Taylor punted the ball. Career punt yardage record all time single season. Punt yardage record all time. And he booms one here. And then gave his special teams time to get down there with the coverage. Now they didn't blow the return man down. I thought for sure he was down. D. Williams. But they didn't say so. So I was going, what the heck happened there? They... they they let the play roll. I mean, give D. Williams credit, I guess. He just got up and started going again. Well, listen, no whistle was blown. I mean, his 
I think his knees down and his elbows down. I agree. I, I give D. Williams credit. He's one of the best punt returners in the country. Don't take it for granted. No, and, and what's great about that is the officials let it go. Right? Because if his knee or elbow wasn't down, you don't want to blow that. Players under further review. You don't want to blow that dead early and possibly bring back a big play, but I do think after replay that's coming back. Well, John Nestor, the freshman defensive back, Chicago native, he was convinced. Iowa's moving back down. Tennessee's saying, okay, we I think we agree. They are going to officially review this. We get an ACC officiating crew here today. John Nestor, somebody that this Hawkeyes coaching staff is really excited about. They said he has had a tremendous bowl month, and the Hawkeyes have kind of made their name on one or two players emerging in these bowl games. They say that John Nestor might be the next. They also have such a great reputation as a school that develops defensive backs. And part of that is their coordinator, Phil Parker, who's the Broyles Award winner, one of the great coaches in all of college football. He's the DB coach as well. I think it's pretty clear that he's down a couple different ways. And I, I'm sorry we don't get to see Cooper DeGene in this game. Still banged up. Lost for the year in November. One of the great players in the country. He, he is here on the Iowa sideline. There's Cooper. Hasn't officially announced yet whether he's going to the NFL. If he does, he's got a chance to be a first-round pick. No question. He's a guaranteed first-round pick. Consensus All-American. Tremendous player. Mel Kuyper has him listed as the number one quarterback, or excuse me, cornerback coming out in this year's draft. When he got hurt, boy, it was a huge blow to this team. But you were talking about the rest of the secondary. There's another All-American back there in Sebastian Castro. A couple All-Big Ten. After further review... Runner was down at the 27-yard line. Okay, so I think we do. That was the case. And John Nestor gets a chance to celebrate now. A little delayed celebration. 58-yard punt with the immediate tackle. No return. That's Iowa Hawkeyes football. So Tennessee at the 27. And Nico Iamaliava, true freshman quarterback. Just a huge prospect out of high school from Southern California, a long way from home to go to Knoxville. And expected to be the face of this program starting opening day next year. He'll throw middle, and the pass was dropped. Keaton had it. That was a good throw, incomplete. It was a great throw. Ema Leava put it exactly where it needed to be. Keaton just working a one-on-one -on -one slant route down to the boundary. Great throw by the young quarterback, Nico. I mean, right there. Ramel Keaton. Now the handoff on second down and a big hole right side. Dylan Sampson. I was so good at limiting big plays. Tennessee's got him for a couple big run games already. Great job by the right side of the offensive line led by right guard Jackson Lampley. So right back to the line of scrimmage. Another huge hole into Iowa territory down to the 40. Sampson once again, 15 more yards on the ground. And this is one of the reasons why the Tennessee Vols are so dangerous on offense. When they can consistently pick up first downs, they're able to play with tempo. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense. I mean, Iowa just doesn't see this kind of tempo in the Big Ten. There's nobody who does it this way. Now the pass, complete right side. Ian Aliava's been very accurate. Keaton held on to this one. Six more yards for the Volunteers. Well, I would never guess that this was Nico's first career start. He is in complete command of his offense down there, playing really efficient football right now. Had the whole month to prepare as a starter, and really that's the way they did it. He's going to scramble. Ian Aliava, big, tall kid, but he can move inside the 20. First down. Tennessee moving the ball in a hurry. Final minute of the first quarter. That's another 15-yard game. Well, I tell you what, this quarterback smooth at six foot six, 205 pounds, does a great job. Nothing open downfield, doesn't force it, tucks it, gets positive yards. Play fake. Now again, going to try to run. He runs into his own guy and goes down. So that's a loss of a couple yards. And that's something that a young quarterback has to learn. There's not always a play to be made. Sometimes if nothing's open downfield and the pocket's starting to break down, just find a throwaway so you can save the yardage for your offense. Joe Evans, with some help, gets credit for that one. Playing his final game. Now there's Joe Milton, the starter all year long for Tennessee, opting out of this bowl game, but has been with his team the whole month, has helped 
Iamali Ava prepare for his first career start. Tennessee's going to let the final seconds tick off the clock. End of quarter number one. With the Hawkeyes involved, what else did you expect? A nothing, nothing game, but Tennessee on the move. Great scene here in Orlando for this Cheese It Citrus Bowl. Nothing, nothing. You're watching the Cheese It Citrus Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania, back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, it's one of the coolest traditions in all of college football back at Kinnick in Iowa City. They do it usually at the end of the third quarter. They did it here in Orlando via Zoom. Players, fans waving back to those kids who are fighting cancer. Actually, at a couple different facilities using Zoom. Anyway, cool to see. Liam Aliaba, first play, second quarter, touchdown, Tennessee! just have an arm. He can move straight ahead, run for the first points of this Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. And for his family, it was worth the long trip. Well, this quarterback has already showed us early in this ball game. He's going to be a big-time player in college football. He can make all the throws and just showed off his athleticism with his legs there. Extra point coming for Tennessee. Seven plays, 73 yards, a 19-yard touchdown run. Extra point is up and good. And the balls with a 7-0 lead. I love the play design by Josh Heupel. Keep an eye on running back Dylan Sampson. This is a design quarterback draw. But look at the block that Dylan Sampson delivers on Quinn Schulte. It's what sparks his quarterback for the touchdown. Tremendous execution by the balls. Those long strides, you know, he's 6'6", only 206 pounds, but he covers some ground with those strides, and yeah, they loved it. Oh, that's fun. That's, that's what college football is all about. First career start, his entire family making the trip all the way out from California. That's fun. I mean, not to, not to put too much pressure on the young man, but... There's no official confirmation of this, but it was a big dollar number, the NIL deal that was not the only reason, but part of the reason why Iamaliava ended up in Knoxville. And you can see why. I mean, the talent level is really high. No question. And then the opportunity to play quarterback for Josh Heupel. There's not a lot of coaches that know the position any better. Josh Heupel winning a national title as a quarterback. He was a consensus All-American himself. So this uh, this ceiling for Nico is very hot. I mean, the quarterback history at Tennessee, somewhere uh, you figure one of your old teammates, Peyton Manning, is checking in on his balls today. And this Citrus Bowl, short kickoff and returnable across the 25 and outside the 30. Norwegian with a nice return. The Iowa offense will come back on the field. College football playoff semifinals on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Plus. And we don't have to wait too much longer. Number one, Michigan. Number four, Alabama. What a scene that's going to be at the Rose Bowl game. Five Eastern, two Pacific. And then number two, Washington. Number three, Texas in the Sugar Bowl. The winners, of course, will play Monday, January 8th. The national championship game will be on ESPN. What a New Year's Day. Tennessee with their true freshman quarterback making his first start. Out to a 7-0 lead. Let's see if the Iowa offense can bounce back. Oh, they've done some good things so far, but the turnover in the red zone, a killer in the first quarter. And now a penalty flag thrown. Play a game. Wow. Offense. That hurts. First play of the drive. That just can't happen. First play of the drive. You know the play as the quarterback, as the leader. Deacon Hill, get your guys in the huddle. Get the play call. Get to the line of scrimmage. Can't get off schedule on first and ten. And you see Brian Ferentz with his dad, Kirk. going to be the final game as the offensive coordinator for Brian Ferentz. That's a big part of the story of this season for Iowa. Now pressure comes and a sack. Wow, pressure came immediately. A big loss on first down after the penalty. Simmons was there. Tyree West was there. Well, the pressure came from up top. When you bring secondary pressure and your running back has to abort your offensive line, everybody's going to be in one-on-one -on -one block.
blocking situations. Credit that Tennessee front getting after it up front. Big number 42, Tyree West defeating the block and Elijah Simmons, number 10, doing a great job. Two sacks already. Tennessee, one of the top sack totals in all of college football. Now on second down, the screen play set up, and Tennessee kind of saw that one coming. Sean Williams with the catch, and all he did was get back to the line of scrimmage. And this is where the Hawkeyes offense is just not equipped on third down and forever. No, they're not built to be in this mode, and that's why I said on first and 10, when you take the delay game penalty and you get into first and 15, you cannot get off schedule the way that this offensive system is built. It just hurt them, and that's why they're in third and 23. You kind of figure this would be a handoff. Keep an eye on Pierce at the top of your screen. Oh, there's nobody in the backfield. Williams split out wide right. Hill going to throw middle, and that pass dropped. Caleb Brown's dropped two already. Wasn't going to be close to enough for a first down, but it cost him some field position. Well, that's exactly it. And Caleb Brown, you just mentioned it, his second drop in just as many series. That drop is critical because that's going to help you flip the field position with your punter. Caleb Brown, he's going to have to find a way to get to the sideline, move past it, move on to the next play, because the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to need him as this day unfolds. So the All-American punter, Torrey Taylor, back on the field. 250-plus yard punts already, averaging 62 yards a kick so far in this game. This one's not going to be quite that far, but a fair catch made around the 30 by D. Williams. 7-0 Tennessee getting the ball back. This is the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. 7-0 Tennessee, early second quarter from the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. You can kind of see what's going on there in the background. Now your normal scene at a football game, Cheez-It, the cheesiest sponsor of college football, making sure fans are looking and feeling the cheesiest. The Cheez-It Flexin section, an on-field barber shop, serving up those fresh Cheez-It Citrus Bowl cuts, and then once you get your hair done in a Cheez-It fashion, you go into a Cheez-It coma. <laughs> you think it's gonna look good on him? That's live. Sure, why not? I mean, they're literally cutting the little cheeses into the side of everybody's hair. It's so good. Yeah. Big line to get that. Look, play fake on first down. Tennessee's offense humming against a really good Iowa defense and the completion again. This time, Caleb Webb. I tell you what, Iamaliava looks outstanding. He's in total control of this football game. Great job finding the one-on-one -on -one matchup to the boundary. After the first down, handoff left side, and a nice game. That's Cam Seldon, along with Dylan Sampson. He figures to be a big part of the Tennessee offense next season. Very talented young man from a small high school in the state of Virginia. He was a big-time recruit. So first and ten in Iowa territory already. Ian Aliava going to take off and get ripped to the ground. He did end up getting a yard on that play. There haven't been many true freshman quarterbacks in bowl games in the history of Tennessee football. That first guy on the list turned out to be pretty good, didn't he? Yeah, he did a few good things on a football field. And I'm, look, that's too high of a bar. Peyton Manning is one of the true all-time greats, but that's what... Tennessee fans are dreaming about the West number. No question, and, and that's, that's what they expect in Knoxville, right? They want to compete for national titles, and a lot of people think that Nico is the next quarterback that can get this football team to contend. I mean, they've already rebuilt the program to a point where they're in such a better place. Another good run from that true freshman, Selden. He gets eight. It'll be third down and short. Well, listen, Selden at six foot two, 222 pounds. He's a load when he gets coming downfield. He's a physical runner. Let's see if he gets the ball here on third and one. He does. And trying to push his way forward, got close. It's going to depend on the spot. I don't think he got there. We'll see. No, he did not. Sebastian Castro, part of the Iowa defense to stop him short. So now it's fourth and about a half yard. You're going to see Castro come in from the top of your screen, unblocked at the strong safety position. All-American safety for the Hawkeyes. Great job on the one-on-one -on -one tackle. Well, Tennessee's going to go for it on fourth and one, already leading 7-0. Bring in a couple extra big bodies. 
I like this decision. ESPN Analytics says this is an absolute go for it. I like the field position where the balls are at. With the play clock winding down, they're going to call a timeout. Tennessee. And just make sure not only that they're organized, but that every eligible receiver reports just in case. You know, you never know. Fourth and one coming up. We'll be back right after this. The Cheez-It Citrus Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Cheez-It, official sponsor of the college football playoff. That was a cool day with the kids for the Iowa and Tennessee players over at Fun Spot America. Lots of kids from the Orlando community, the old bumper cars. How about Sean Davey and Bradley? Riding that roller coaster. Yeah, sure. Fourth and a half a yard. The roller coaster ride of the Iowa season with their offense, with their defense, has been something else. Their defense needs to hold here on fourth and about two feet. If I'm the balls, I'm doing some sort of RPO where I get my quarterback outside the pocket so he has a run throw option. He's going under center here like he might sneak it. Instead, he's going to hand it off right side run. They'll get the first down. That's Cam Seldon, power running back. Now, penalty flag thrown at the end of the play and I think that's going against Iowa so this is going to be a first down on the run and then some extra yardage if I'm right to so Sean Lee I think was frustrated at the end of that play now who knows maybe I missed part of it the results of the play is a first down after the play unsportsmanlike conduct defense number eight 15 yard penalty first down yeah, that's to Sean Lee so that adds 15 yards in Tennessee down inside the 20 already leading 7 nothing. great opportunity here. So the run and then the penalty at the end of the play. Iowa's defense trying to hold here Tennessee moving the ball. Selden again and he showed patience and then that burst that's what the next step for this young guy is learning that running back position let's see if we can see at the end of the play well he kind of threw a punch there at the end of the jostling and that was enough to get the penalty second and five Yamaliava in the pocket now scrambling and he'll cut it inside. Wow, I thought he was just going to throw it away. Instead, he got close to the first down. Well, when you have feet like that, why would you throw it away? What a move by Nico. Great job. Pocket broke down. Logan Lee getting some pressure in there on the quarterback early for the Hawkeyes. Then Nico making a great play outside the pocket. The thing I love about the true freshman quarterback right now making his first career start, he's protecting the football. If the throw isn't there, he's not forcing it downfield. Against a team statistically that was about the best defense in the country. And he, they, he did get a first down. They spotted him enough yardage to get the first down. Now Moving they're stopping the field, things. Was a first down. That play is under further review. And they're going to review that. So they'll they'll take a look and see whether he actually did get the first down. Well, the Hawkeyes defense had minimum to just catch their breath a little bit. Because Tennessee's offense, I mean, they're averaging almost seven yards a play. Where would you guess? About the 12-yard line? Yeah, maybe right behind that 12. About 12 and a half. And depends on the angle we see. But you just said it. What this Tennessee offense is doing right now in yards per play, it's just so impressive because the Hawkeyes came into the bowl game the number two yards per play defense in the country, keeping teams to less than four yards per play. Tennessee has absolutely exceeded that in the first half today. These are hard with the, even with a really good experience replay crew. It's just, it's hard to tell sometimes, even with a lot of cameras. After further review, the runner was stopped short of the line of game okay. at the seven yard line. So I said 12, I was on the wrong side of the 10 yard line. So that was between the eight and the seven. So it's gonna be third down and short. They've run the ball seven straight times on this drive. 
and they're knocking on the door. Well, why wouldn't you? Dylan Sampson making his first career start as well at the running back position today. Averaging nine and a half yards a clip right now, and Cameron Selden over five yards a rush. So if you're Tennessee and the young quarterback in the game, keep handing the football off. They have not converted a third down yet in this first half. Sampson out of the game. Selden is back in in an eye formation. The Amaliava under center gives it to Selden. Right side run, pushing forward. And I think he's going to get it down to the five. That should be plenty good enough. First down, Tennessee. Tennessee. It'll be first and goal. Tennessee running the big fellas off the field, getting the speed back out there with a fresh set of downs. Keep your eyes on the right side of the screen. Tight end number 87, Jacob Warren, doing a tremendous job on the initial line push. Creating a great little seam there for his running back. So Tennessee substituted, not going super fast tempo here on first and goal. Selden, a couple of true freshmen in the backfield alongside his young teammate, gets the carry left side. I think he's already made progress. You know, they talked about how in high school, now the ball came out at the end of that play. The official well, says down. The went down. Second down. So you can't turn the ball over as a young running back. Cornerback Jamari Harris, number 27, doing a great job reaching in there, going for the strip. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he ripped it away at the end of that play, but I do think that knee was down. They get to play snap quickly anyway, just in case, and a second rushing touchdown for Iamaliava. It's turning into a coming out party for the young man from Southern California. Going to be Knoxville's favorite here before too long. 13-0 with an extra point coming. Well, Ian Maleava coming into this game, we knew that he was highly touted. We knew he had a lot of talent. He played in a little bit of garbage time, third, fourth quarters, and some blowouts for the balls this year. So we could see flashes, and we were anticipating a great showing by the former five-star prospect. And he has been a lot of fun to watch in this first half today. Uh, lining up for the extra point. 11 play touchdown drive. And they never needed their kid to throw a pass. They just ran it. Now it helps when your quarterback can run it like this. Goal to go. Just skipped right in and made his family proud. Tennessee playing so well in this first half against one of the best defenses in college football, leading 14-0, still 8-12 to go until halftime. Week 18, NFL season finale is back, and we've got a doubleheader for you on Saturday with playoff implications all over the place. Steelers-Ravens, 415 Eastern on ESPN, ABC, ESPN Plus. Texans-Colts at 8 Eastern across the board, ESPN, ABC, ESPN Plus. Some fascinating games with lots of moving parts still going into the final week of the regular season. Tennessee will kick the ball very short here. Fair catch signal made at around the 31 yard line. That was really short. This was much more impressive as opposed to that kickoff. The entrance for the mascot. The cheese it Citrus Bowl mascot. They're trying to get everybody feeling the cheesiest. Ched Z. Cheese it the cheesiest sponsor of college football. Proud to bring back the ultimate icon of insanity. Making sure this cheese it Citrus Bowl is just the way you want it. Ched Z. Welcome to the field. All right, back to football. He had the sign, not edible, unlike the bowl game here a few nights ago. Hand off for Iowa. I mean, Hawkeyes just are not built to come from behind. Caleb Johnson, and they have to kind of stick to their plan on offense. No game. They do, but at some point, I'd like to see the Hawkeyes take a shot on true freshman cornerback Ricky Gibson. He's making his first career start, and right there on first and 10, Tennessee came out in man-to-man -man coverage, press across the board. If you recognize that as a quarterback, I want to test the young cornerback outside. Second down and 10. Tight end in motion, and they'll hand the ball off. Left side run. And a good job turning the corner down the sideline. That'll be a first down, Caleb Johnson. Gain of 
14. Roman Harrison was there on the edge to make the play for the Vols, number 30. You're going to see at the top of your screen, just misses the tackle. Caleb Johnson doing a great job getting to that edge, picking up some extra yards, and getting a first down for Iowa. But Johnson stays in outside the 45-yard line. It's a big drive for Iowa, down two touchdowns already. Shotgun snap. Hill will throw incomplete. Just whistled it right above Caleb Johnson. Yeah. A little bit of an errant throw there by Deacon Hill, but credit the Tennessee defense. Yeah, doing a great job in zone coverage. Really nowhere to go with the football for Deacon Hill. Under 50% completions for his season. Well, if they weren't expecting him to be the starter, he began the year as a backup. Dave McNamara is here. Still hurt. They're expecting him healthy and back next year, and presumably he will be the starter for the Hawkeyes next season. And I think that'll help their offense. They'll have a new coordinator as well. Hill is going to spin away. That is definitely not his strength. He did a good job to avoid the sack. Maybe got a yard. We're going to get a look inside. Big 21, Amari Thomas. He is just a beast inside at six foot four, 320 pounds, and can't be stopped. Beats the left guard, Rusty Feth. Causes the initial disruption. I mean, he's a load inside. He's an active player, and I tell you what, he is athletic for how big he is. And he said he is coming back next year for another year with the balls. Third down and long. Here's the matchup I keep talking about with the true freshman corner at the bottom of your screen. Some boy, you got to try, right? Hill will throw middle instead. It's knocked down incomplete. And he had that one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against a guy who's hardly played in his freshman year. It's fourth down. At some point, you have to test that matchup. We keep talking about how their Tennessee secondary, they've just been depleted with transfers and portal guys. There's only two of their everyday starters playing on that back end today. You have to test those young players. I don't think he even looked out there. He didn't. So fourth and nine. Taylor back out to punt. Two return men back for Tennessee, including D. Williams, one of the better punt returners in the country. Trying to angle that one towards the goal line, but it's going to bounce into the end zone for a touchback. So we will take a timeout here. Just a beautiful New Year's Day in Orlando. This is the Cheez It Citrus Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Roddy Jones in our college football studio. I had that exact suit picked out. I saw it. I believe it. I, I was going to wear it. Great in it. And then I didn't want to smell like cheese all day. <laughs> hey, Nico Iamaliava. Future is now for Tennessee. He's looked good in the first half. He's been impressive. He's done it with his arms. We saw him score a touchdown with his legs. To so score 15 points against uh, 14 points against Iowa's defense, I mean, that's a heck of a performance so far. I wonder if Iowa's got the offense to come back. Plus, we'll check in on the Rose Bowl. That and more coming up at the half. More cheese its for everyone. Yeah, why not? Thank you, Matt. 6.03 to go until halftime. Tennessee's got the ball back, and Yamaliava throws it left side, and it's dropped by Caleb Webb. Second and 10. Have to go back to 2016. Last time a Tennessee quarterback had multiple rush touchdowns in a bowl game. And it's not just that. It's the rushing offense with him as a big part of it against a really stingy defense. Another little swing pass left side. This one complete with a good block ahead. Squirrel White touches the ball for the first time. He's the leading receiver for Tennessee, gain of 12. Well, and you got to take those throws. You have the numbers out there. If you have the numbers in this offense and the box counts right, you got to throw those RPOs. Great play, decision. Yeah, play fake. Iamaliava now going to get tackled from behind. Maybe get a yard. When we start talking about the numbers out here, this is what I'm talking about. You're going to see Freeze right here. There's only one guy outside. You have two Tennessee Vols over one Iowa Hawkeye defender. Those are the numbers I'm talking about. Great job of taking advantage by quarterback Nico Iamaleava. Right when in motion, they hand the ball off. Left side run. And Sampson gets four to set up third down. This is a critical third down for Iowa, right? They haven't had much success stopping this Tennessee offense. You definitely don't want to get down in this game by three possessions. This is a critical, gotta have it moment for the Hawkeye defense. And I think their fans know that too, trying to help 
give Iowa the feeling they can get back in this game. Yamaliava in the pocket, and he'll go down the sack for Iowa. Jay Higgins, who's going to come back and play another year next season, has piled up the tackles all year long. He gets the sack. Great job by linebacker Jay Higgins inside. He leads Power Five in tackling, just completely defeats the block by running back Dylan Sampson. So that's a big stop for Iowa's D. And they will get the ball back now. They just need the offense to get it going. Jay Higgins came into this game 155 tackles on the year. A low angled punt. A bounce on that turf. And a good Tennessee bounce all the way down to about the 22 yard line. That's where the Hawkeyes will have the ball. With 3.53 to go until halftime. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. Great day to be flying the blimp up above Camping World Stadium here in Orlando. It was a great stop by the Hawkeye defense. Came out and pressed man coverage. A lot of blitz from the inside. They knew it was a got-to-have-it moment as well. Needed to get the football back for the offense. Especially, don't forget, Tennessee starts with the football in the third quarter. Very critical for the Hawkeyes to get points here. I mean, the passing offense has been non-existent. The total offense, you saw that number 54 yards for Iowa so far. Three times this year already, they've been held scoreless in a first half. Rolling right, Hill throws on the move. Nice delivery. And the catch by Caleb Brown for an Iowa first down. He's dropped a couple in the first half. That one gets 13 yards. Well, I love what the play action does when you're a run team. Keep an eye on middle linebacker right here, number 44, Elijah Herring. He gets his eyes caught inside. That's called dirty eyes on defense. He's tracking the running back, which is what sparks the big play. He needs to reroute that wide receiver, Caleb Brown, coming across the middle, but his eyes are caught in the backfield. You can see why they like Caleb Brown so much. He's just got to hang on to the ball. Made the catch there, gets the first down. Out to the 35, under center, handoff straight ahead. And a gain of five out to the 40. Caleb Johnson again. A lot of times as an offense, when you're struggling to get it going a little bit, you just need that first, first down of a drive. Gets you into rhythm. Everyone kind of takes a deep breath. Hawkeye's doing a great job here. They're going to really want to melt as much clock as possible while still getting points. They don't want to give Tennessee an extra possession here late in the first half. Under three minutes to go until halftime. Second and five. Right side run now. And stacked up at the line of scrimmage. A big hit there. Tyree West. It'll be third down. They're still on the Iowa side of the field. So third and four here. Critical for Deacon Hill here to find his best matchup. We keep talking about some first-time starters playing in the secondary today for the Vols. Find your go-to matchup and take advantage of it here on this gotta-have-it third down. All the way up on the far left right there. There's your true freshman corner. Play snapped. Hill's thrown in that direction, and he just kind of wobbled it. He did not target. Well, I don't know who he was trying to throw that ball to. He was trying to work number 89, Nico Regaini, on the out route there. Another good man-to-man -man matchup. I think Regaini is best in man coverage at separating for the Hawkeyes. I know I keep saying it, but at some point, you need to take a shot at the true freshman corner. They just haven't done it. So fourth and four with the incompletion that stops the clock. Tennessee's going to get the ball back now. They'll lean on their punter here to make sure it's not great field position. But another half here for the Iowa offense. 74 total yards, no points on the board. Williams trying to spin away, could not do it. Not a good special teams tackle there. 14-0 Tennessee. Look, we've celebrated Tennessee, and their offense deserves some credit. Really exciting to see the true freshman quarterback, but this has got to be driving Iowa fans crazy. They're wide, they've watched the same game over and over on offense all year long. Yeah, and it's, it's just so frustrating. Iowa just cannot generate points. They did a good job early in the first quarter driving down the field, but then quarterback Deacon Hill had a costly interception. 
that just hurt the Hawkeyes. It was their best chance at a chance for a touchdown. But right now here, this top five defense for the Hawkeyes, they need to step up. You cannot allow points late here in the second quarter. And off on first down. Tennessee has no problem running the ball even in a late half, late game situation because they do go up tempo so effectively. Well, and this is just such a critical drive here because with Tennessee getting the ball to start the second half, they have a chance at a 14-point swing here. Really putting the Iowa defense on their heels right now. So far, not a lot of urgency. We'll see if they can get a first down. Maybe they pick up the tempo. Play fake. The Amaliava, nowhere to go with the ball, so now he's on the move. He'll throw, and it is caught along the sideline. What a catch by Keaton. And a back shoulder style throw on the move for a Tennessee first down. Unbelievable throw and catch there by the young quarterback, Nico Keaton. Tremendous job tracking that football and getting a foot down in bounds. Now they stop things right as the ball got snapped. I thought they snapped it. But the officials. The completed pass for a first down. That play is under further review. So they're going to review a, a first quick glance from us. I thought it was a catch. I agree. I didn't get a great look at it out the gate, but from what I could see, that foot was down in bounds for Keaton. I think so. That's a catch. Great, great job on both sides. Tremendous concentration. Iamal Lava putting the football where only his guy can make a play. And I love the back shoulder, keeping it away from the Hawkeye defensive back. Tell you what, Nico has put on a show in the first half. Wow. Do you think Tennessee fans are getting excited about this kid? I think college football is excited about this kid. I, I agree. You know, all the talk of opt-outs, and uh, we all agree something needs to be done to help encourage players to play in these bowl games that we care about a lot. In this case, though, the opt-out. I'm not saying Joe Milton didn't have a good year. Joe Milton's a good player. But it has given Tennessee fans a chance to see After further review, their future. Ruling on the field stands. Ruling on the field first stands. Down. Great throw. First down with 106 on the clock. Tennessee now can be aggressive. Yeah, and they still have two timeouts in their back pocket. So really... To one minute, eight seconds. Really, the entire field of play is open for Josh Heupel to throw this football around wherever he wants. Run plays are still in play. Screen passes. That's a full playbook at your arsenal right now. 27 yards. Iowa gave up fewer of those big pass gains this year than any defense in the country. They gave up fewer big plays than anybody, run or pass. Another play fake. Iamaliava scrambling and didn't throw it away. Takes a sack. So now, Tennessee, I don't know if they'll use a timeout or just get to the line of scrimmage quickly. Clock moving. Boy, I'm really surprised Josh Heupel didn't take one of his two timeouts there as those receivers are running back to save time. The young quarterback has to throw that football away next time. Yeah, that one, you figure, that's a learning experience for him. Pressure again. Going backwards and throws it incomplete. Third and 15 with 34 seconds on the clock. You know, different scenario. You might be totally conservative here. It is a, I mean, it's a bowl game where you're giving your kid, you know, maybe you, you, the strategy is a little different. Big picture, the Iowa offense has yet to produce points. Be smart with the football here if you're Tennessee. And they'll hand the ball off. So I think that counts. Sampson trying to get to the corner. Got shoved out of bounds. And a pretty short gain. So with 29 seconds on the clock and fourth down, I would imagine that Tennessee will just punt the ball back. Gilman Sampson on the carry. And be content to go to the locker room with the two-touchdown lead. Great stop by the Iowa defense. You got a sense there that they were kind of on their heels and they were reeling. But to get off the field, force a punt, be down 14 at half. Great job by the Hawkeye defense. I'm guessing that... Brian Ferentz just told Deacon Hill we're going to be taking a knee when we get the ball back here. I've been wrong before though. A low line drive kind of punt. Played on a bounce and a nice return. Very nice return. Who knows? That might actually change the strategy with 21 seconds. There is a penalty flag though. Down with the return. There is a flag on the play. So a flag on the field. We'll see. It's going to mostly penalty free Turn first. The kid, 
receiving team number one. Elliott's after this into the okay, goal I'm line. Going back to my kneel down, down prediction. Iowa. College football playoff semifinals on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, ESPN, ESPN Plus. Number one, Michigan takes on number four, Alabama, in the Rose Bowl two and a half hours from now. Five Eastern, two Pacific. And then later tonight, number two, Washington, number three, Texas, in the Sugar Bowl. Winners, of course, will play January 8th for the national championship on ESPN. I, I think we're going to get two great games. I am so excited to watch some football this afternoon. You and I saw Washington up close and personal a bunch of times this year. The Huskies with their offense against Texas in New Orleans on the turf. From inside the 10, Iowa will not kneel down, but just hand the ball off. I don't think anybody's going to take a timeout. Seconds will wind down. And that should be the final play of a first half that, unfortunately for Iowa, all too familiar. Fourth time this year in 14 games, Iowa goes to the locker room without a point. Yeah, no good. Deacon Hill had a chance to get points on the board early in the first quarter for the Hawkeyes. Had that costly interception in the red zone. We'll see if they can clean some things up at halftime and produce some points in the second half. And as you said a couple times there in the last minute, Tennessee gets the ball to start the second half. Well, Josh Heupel has to be pretty pleased with the way his team played here in the first half against a very good defense. Speaking of Josh, he's down on the field with Kayla. Well, Coach, only his first career start in the first half. He has two rushing touchdowns. His poise has been outstanding, but what impresses you most about Nico's play? He's done a good job of managing everything. Uh, you know, a sack there in a two-minute drill that we can't take. Been smart with the ball, um, so got to go play for another 30 minutes. Defensively, you guys have been able to hold Deacon Hill in that offense. How do you continue to improve on that and carry that over in the second half? Uh, done a good job in the run game. Been destructive, uh, played vertically, uh, tackled well. Uh, we got to be a little bit better on some of our third downs just in coverage, matching some things out. Uh, we were able to get off the field, but uh, got to go play for another 30 minutes. Thank you. All right, thanks to Josh Heupel. Thanks to Kayla. Nico Iamaliava. He is a story for the Volunteers. Making his first career start on the big stage, and he played very well. 14-0 Tennessee. Now we'll send it to Matt Berry and Roddy Jones in studio. Welcome back to the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania on this beautiful New Year's Day in Orlando, Florida. The Tennessee ball is really good first half. They lead Iowa 14-0. Look, look what we got. They don't mess around with this Cheez-It Citrus Bowl, by the way. I couldn't I didn't have enough time to get the necklace on. You've got the belt which is presented to the MVP of this game. And I tell you what, the story of the game in a lot of ways is the true freshman quarterback. Nico Iomaliava for Tennessee. He's got a chance to be wearing that thing at the end of the afternoon. I think he has a fantastic chance. He's right now currently the leader in the clubhouse. And listen, I have been so <laughs> impressed. Love your necklace. Yeah, uh -huh. With the true freshman quarterback <laughs> today, I think one of the things that stands out to me most is his command of the offense, his cool, calm demeanor. He's been in complete control all day with already two rushing touchdowns for the football game. Listen up. He is well worth the price of admission. If you've yet to see this guy play, tune in for the second half and listen we're, we're trying to figure out we're throwing some comparisons around who does he remind you of the thing that jumps out to me right now i think of marcus mariota when it comes to how dangerous nico's been with his legs today I, uh, high praise comparing him to another great all-time ball peyton manning but tennessee freshman quarterbacks in a bowl game peyton was slinging it around nico using his legs and his arm Again, it's unfair, but the bar is almost that high in terms of the expectation level from Tennessee fans. And they haven't been disappointed with the way that he has played here in the first half. Tennessee and that offense will have the ball to start the second half. Let's go down to Caleb Burton. Well, Dave, I asked Iowa head coach Kirk Ferentz, what do you need to do to get quarterback Deacon Hill more active and get the ball moving downfield? And he said, Kayla has really nothing to do with Deacon. Well, it does, but more importantly, we have to catch the ball. We have to get back to our fundamentals. And he is looking towards guys like Caleb Brown to step up. He says we need our tight ends more involved. Our penalties have to be limited on the offensive side of the ball. We just haven't played a complete offensive side this half. He says, we better see some changes come second half right here. Yeah, they need him. They're first things first, their defense, which 
Look, was it a disaster in the first half for Iowa? No, but this is a team that has shut some people down, including Michigan in the Big Ten championship game in terms of yardage, and Tennessee moved the ball against them in the first half. Second down run, and Sampson is going to get enough for a Tennessee first down. And, and it's this run game that the Tennessee Vols currently have is one of the biggest reasons why the true freshman quarterback is so comfortable. As a young quarterback, when you are able to successfully run the football, it takes so much pressure off you. Four receivers, a running play. That's how Tennessee likes to do it. Spread the field, tax your defense, hand it off. The run game has been effective. That time only a yard, maybe two. Listen, and when you play with the wide splits that the Tennessee Vols offense does, it puts a lot of pressure on the linebackers and defensive front for the opponent. Play fake. A lot of time, and that throw wide open. Completion near midfield to cut upfield by Squirrel White. First down, Tennessee into Iowa territory. Well, that was a good tackle by Harris because when Squirrel White gets the football out in space, he is as dangerous as anybody in America. Great job on the two-man route combination. Once again, Nico Iamaleo Ava just reading through his progression. Going deep, showing off that arm right side. Incomplete, his receiver stopped. I, I don't know whether Keaton lost the ball or what. I think the pass was right where it needed to be. It was a perfectly thrown pass. I, I, I totally agree. I think Keaton just lost the ball. I don't know if it was in the sun or he didn't think the football was coming to him. But he definitely beat the defensive back. That was going to be a surefire touchdown. Keep running to the corner, and that's right in his basket. That's a touchdown. I'll tell you what, Nico is seeing the field so well right now for a young quarterback. Second and ten. Hand off, Sampson, left side, maybe got a couple to set up third down. Iowa doing anything they can to slow down this rushing attack that's already ran for over 100 yards, bringing Sebastian Castro from the nickelback position on that last play. Quick tempo on third and long. Yamaliava in the pocket, now goes down. And another sack for Joe Evans. He's playing his final game at Iowa, and that's his third sack of the game. Joe Evans is having himself a ball game. See here on the left side of your screen, the offensive line is in a full slide. He gets on running back Dylan Sampson. That is no matchup for a running back. Joe Evans is going to win that every single time. Dylan Sampson, no chance there. Five sacks for Iowa already today and some words from the head coach to the young quarterback the touchdown play was there and they didn't convert now trying to angle this punt toward the corner and very effectively so inside the 10 close to the five for the Hawkeyes getting the ball back Wednesday night we've got two NBA matchups for you Bulls Knicks from Madison Square Garden that game on ABC at 8.30 Eastern on Wednesday. Then the Heat and the Lakers on ESPN at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. NBA countdown getting the night started at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. Probably not the way that Kirk Ferentz, Brian Ferentz, and the Iowa folks dreamed up starting the second half on offense. Only 81 yards of the first half, and you begin at the six-yard line. To start the first possession of the third quarter for the Hawkeyes. Under center, handoff. And a decent job by Leshawn Williams to get even a couple yards out of that. So important for this Iowa offense to find some rhythm here early in the third quarter. They really only had one great drive in that first half. They got to get into rhythm, stay ahead of the sticks, and find some one on one matchups on the perimeter that they can take advantage of. This is a Tennessee team very short handed in the secondary because of opt outs and players who entered the portal and are transferring. And Iowa had 29 passing yards in the first half. That's right. The balls are down three starters on the back end. It's time to find a matchup take a shot down the field they just have not done that play fake Hill in the end zone pressure throws it away well, there was nowhere to go with that football Deacon Hill did a tremendous job of avoiding the sack safety getting rid of that football keeping it third and manageable Deacon Hill coming off the play action fake, just nowhere to go. Two balls right in his face. Great job by the young quarterback to get that ball thrown away. But now third and eight. Iowa only two for eight on third downs in this game. They're handed it off on third and eight, and they'll get a yard, maybe two. 
Well, that's just like a concession. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that play call there by Brian Ferris. I understand head coach Kirk Ferris wants to play ball control, complimentary football, field position game. But the Hawkeyes, they've had some guys open on third down. There's just been a little bit of an issue with some drops. I'd like to see a pass there on that third and eight. So now the punter, the All-American Torrey Taylor, who's got more punt yards in his career than anybody in the history of college football. Let that one sink in for a second. Of course, Iowa fans are going, no kidding. He's gotten a lot of practice. That one back all the way inside the 40. Could be returnable. We'll see. No. Good coverage there. Squirrel White was back to receive that punt. So another good one from Torrey Taylor. 14-0 Tennessee. The Vols will have the ball back when we come back to the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl as a part of Capital One Bowl Mania. We already showed you cheesy giving haircuts in the flexing section. How about there is a spot? Fans have literally the hottest seats in the house. The cheese it on field hot tub. Plus, you get the nail treatments, you got the massage. Looking and feeling the cheesiest, those folks. And that's Rob, who is our handheld camera. This is a live shot. You know, it's hard. You lug that heavy camera around for a full game. It ain't easy. You see the smile on his face? This is Rob's favorite game of his entire career. How good is that? That's a new idea for our uh, executives, part of our college football team. Let's travel a massage therapist for our handheld operators on the sideline. Rob agrees. Hand off for Tennessee. And a gain of a couple yards on first down. Vols get the ball back. 10.40-plus to go here in the third quarter, leading 14-0. Well, Iowa's defense is doing everything they can to keep their ball club in the game. Another run play straight ahead. That's Cameron Selden for a gain of four. It's third down. Yeah, and this is the third down, down in distance that you want to be if you're the Tennessee Vols. You can run the football, you can throw it, you can get your quarterback outside the pocket. And they do not hesitate to go quick tempo. They'll hand it off on third down, and Iowa was ready for that. Maybe a yard short by definitely a full yard. This would be interesting for Josh Heupel. Does he play conservative and send the punter back out there? He will. Wow, how about that stop by the Hawkeyes defense? Defensive tackle Logan Lee did a great job up front anchoring down, making a play to force the fourth down. And this time, instead of the young quarterback, it was the young running back, Selden, who went over to Josh Heupel, and Heupel had a few coaching points. Tennessee's playing a lot of young kids on the offensive side of the ball. And Jackson Ross once again. Good punt last time. Good punt this time with a fair catch, and no penalty flag. Now here came one. From an official a long way away from the play, there was a flag. So should we keep it here and see what the penalty is? I think we should. Our blimp's not going anywhere. Yeah, there it is. Kick catch interference. Kicking team. 15 yard penalty. First down. So that hurts. Tennessee playing the field position game with a two touchdown lead against a struggling offense 15 yard penalty Hawkeyes will get a little breathing room can they take advantage we'll find out the foul is on number nine the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Cheez-It official sponsor of the college football playoff what a citrus bowl that was for Jerry Judy. Six catches, 204 receiving yards. You only have to go back to 2020 when Michigan and Alabama played in this game. And really, it was all Crimson Tide. Mac Jones and Alabama with a 35-16 win. Today, they meet in Pasadena, part of the college football playoff semifinals. Five Eastern, and then at 845 Eastern, Washington, Texas, the other semifinal game. Still to come on New Year's Day. What a day for college football. Iowa's offense back on the field. Play fake and Deacon Hill just goes down. Now you give credit to Tyree West, but Hill didn't throw the ball away, didn't do anything, just took the sack. Loss of 11. That is a sack 
Deacon Hill cannot take. He needs to stay on the move when he's booting outside the pocket. You're going to see him pull up, and you're going to see a, a receiver at the top of your screen pop wide open. If Deacon Hill stays on the move, maybe he can make a throw at the last second, get some positive yards, or at least dump it down to the running back in the flat. When you're booting outside the pocket, you can never pull up as a quarterback. Third sack for Tennessee. Hill in the pocket. Steps up, throws, and pass complete. He does have a strong arm. Caleb Brown with the catch. So they got a lot of yardage back, plus some to set up third down. Great catch by Caleb Brown. He's had two drops, costly drops, early on in this football game. Great to see him go down, make a great play for his quarterback. Well, Deacon Hill standing strong and tall in the pocket, eyes down the field, navigating the pocket. Third and manageable now for the Hawkeyes. 14 yards, that counts as a big play. Keep an eye on Pierce. He's been relatively quiet. This is a pass rush situation. And that one knocked down incomplete. Into tight coverage, intended for the tight end, but knocked away. Dylan McCullough, nice play on the ball, fourth and six. Another Iowa punt coming. Yeah, that's a play the tight end needs to make. Deacon Hill puts the ball right on his tight end. I get it. It's tight man-to-man -man coverage, but stick your hands out there. Go stab that football. Your defense, they're playing their tails off for you. Offensively, you have to find a way to make a play for your team. And that's one of those areas where you see with tight end Luke Lachey out with the season-ending injury. It has just hurt this Hawkeyes offense. Yeah, he's such a good player. He's coming back next year. That doesn't help him today. Seventh. Iowa punt. This one a towering sky high punt taken back inside the 25. Well, the college football playoff foundation ESPN celebrating 10 years of teaming up to support teachers with the launch of a new postseason initiative called Touchdown for Teachers. A $1,000 donation will be made to local schools for every touchdown score during a bowl game. Visit touchdownforteachers.org for more information. Some local teachers saluted on the field here during this Citrus Bowl. Only two touchdowns so far in this game. None for the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Tennessee leads 14-0. Offense back on the field. Kiamaliava, play fake. The young quarterback throws it, and that one caught at the 30. Nice gain of seven on first down. And Chaz Nimrod, the wide receiver there on that reception, might have got away with a late push-off. Officials didn't see it. Lined up, quick snap. Second down, handoff right into the heart of that defensive line and stopped short again, about a half yard short. Defensive front for Iowa, just so stout here in the second half. Gave up some big yards in the first half. They came to play here in the third quarter. Quick tempo again, another running play, and that's good enough for a first down. Not much more, but across the 35. First and 10, Tennessee. Phil Parker, the Broyles Award winner, top assistant coach in college football this year. According to that prestigious award, there's still a true great in Iowa football history from a coaching standpoint. One of the best in the business at adjusting as a game goes on. Part of why he's so good. Broken tackle, nice run. For Dylan Sampson, the sophomore, getting his first career start today, got seven. Well, Dylan Sampson putting on a show, approaching 100 yards, 97 for the game right now. He's been phenomenal since the get-go. Hard to rush for 100 against Iowa. What a play-action play. Ian Aliaba gets away. Now going to run, and he'll get the Tennessee first down close to midfield. Not much there down the field, so he takes the six yards. And that's what separates great quarterbacks from good quarterbacks. Nico's showing us everything why he is a great quarterback, and he's just going to get better and better. There's no play to be had for the balls. There's no one open yeah. down the field. Pocket starts to break down. Joe Evans is breathing down his neck, who already has three sacks on the game. He finds a way to get outside the pocket and get positive yards. It wasn't yeah. quite the cheesy chain, but that was a pretty good chain on, uh, on Nico's family members there in the stands. Sampson, left side run for a gain of three. Let's go down to Kayla. Well, speaking of Sampson, he told me before this game when he found out that Nico committed to Tennessee, he knew he was a top recruit, and he goes, I don't really know what 
to expect. Is he going to come in with a big ego? Is he going to try to have this offense run completely, entirely by him? But he says this guy is just so humble. He carries himself with that humility, but has that quiet confidence about him. We clearly are seeing with those two rushing touchdowns and the poise that he is carrying without here today. He says he's just a true leader of this team. And really, guys, when I'm on the sidelines, everyone, Joe Milton included, has been hyping him up, holding out the number two because of what he's done so far here. Second down. Again, nowhere to go with the ball down the field. Tried to get back to the line of scrimmage. I don't think he could. Now he lost a half yard. If so, that'll be another sack for Joe Evans. We'll see if they officially credit him with one. You know, it's great to see, though, for the young quarterback. Nothing open down the field. He's got the Hawkeyes defense bearing down on him. He does it. Yeah. 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 And Joe Evans, we talked about the game he's had today. Final game as a Hawkeye. Embodies everything that this Iowa football program is. Former walk-on, sixth all-time in sacks at Iowa. Six-year senior for Ames. Having a great Citrus Bowl. Third down, and Iamaliava drops a snap, picks it up, then hits the turf, and they'll say he's down. Ball came out, but he was down. He dropped the snap. That busted the play right from the start. Into Iowa territory, but a short gain. It'll be fourth down, and... Tennessee's just not going to mess around. They'll punt the ball away. Yeah, you'll see young quarterbacks do that every once in a while. His eyes were initially on the football, but then he took his eyes to his read before the ball was secured in his hands. Young quarterbacks, you got to see that ball all the way in before you start playing. Part of a kid starting for the first time here in the bowl game. So another punt. That's all we've had in this second half so far. Fair catch. Great bounce. Tennessee with good coverage. Keeps it from breaking the plane to the goal line. 45 yards. Jackson Ross can celebrate. Really poor field position for the Iowa offense. Hey, if you like punts, this cheese at Citrus Bowl, man, this is the game for you. Coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. From Orlando on New Year's Day, SEC Big Ten matchup, the Hawkeyes. Is that the haircut area? It is. Trying anything to get the offense going. 14-0 Tennessee, handoff and almost a safety. Wow, Tennessee defender was there near the goal line, maybe even in the end zone, and almost had him. It's Caleb Perry coming off the edge up, up top on your screen, just completely unblocked by Nick DeYoung. Great job by Moulton, avoiding the tackle and avoiding the safety. Freshman running back Kamari Moulton, who's from Fort Lauderdale, playing here today. Play fake. Hill from the end zone, dumps it short and completes the pass outside the five. So that's at least something, four yard gain, third down. Hey, when you're this far backed up, any positive yards gives you some breathing room as an offense, definitely helps out your play call here on third down. Last time Iowa was in this situation, they elected to run the football on third and eight backed up. It'll be interesting to see what Kirk Ferentz elects to do here on third and seven. The head coach, who's one of the deans of all of college football, not looking happy at the way this game is going offensively. So third and seven. Pressure coming. And the ball's out. Knocked away. I think Tennessee fell on. Volunteers have it. The sack fumble, and there's number 27. You've been talking about him. James Pierce Jr., the huge play for the Tennessee defense. We've been talking about him, and now you see why he is one of the Southeastern Conference's most elite pass rushers. Coming off the edge, on the right side of your screen, just beating Nick DeYoung. His speed to power is some of the best in the entire country. He had eight and a half sacks in the regular season. He is a game wrecker for the ball. Freakish athletic ability. That ball was out near the goal line. Tennessee recovers it. 
And they'll have it first and goal right around the two-yard line. Already leading 14-0. Second Iowa turnover. Big-time player, James Pierce. High formation for Tennessee. On first and goal. And off. Stop. Short. Big hit for the Hawkeyes defense. Sampson couldn't get there. I think that was Nick Jackson who's piling up tackles. That's what he does. Four straight years with 100 plus tackles for him. Transfer, rare transfer in Iowa from Virginia. No gain, second and goal. Same kind of formation, fullback in front of Sampson. And Imaliava rolling. Now diving and touchdown. Little improv play from the freshman. His third rushing touchdown at his first career start. It's 20 to nothing volunteers. Well, what a play by the true freshman quarterback. He is a special player. It's going to definitely be reviewed. I don't know. That football was pretty close, but heck of a play by Nico. No one was open coming off the play action. Just complete improvision there by the young quarterback. He's special. Third touchdown on the ground today. That play is under further review. And they are going to officially review this one. And you're right. It's really close. Question is, where's the football when that knee first touches the turf? Knee down there. Ooh, real hard to tell. When you have to remember the initial ruling's a touchdown, so unless we have indisputable video evidence, this is going to remain a touchdown for the balls. I mean, we don't have that absolutely perfect straight down the goal line look. But I think... When that knee's down, I think part of that ball was touching the plane of the goal line. That's just me. My vote doesn't count. I just don't think we have the camera angles to overturn the call. How about this, just for a little perspective while we watch it again and the replay officials take a look. If that play stands, his third rushing touchdown of the game, Iowa gave up four rushing touchdowns all year. After further review, all year. the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Well, what's even scarier to think about as you start heading into next season when it comes to Nico, we've seen what he can do with his legs. We know he has the arm, arm talent. He just hasn't been put in too many positions to show that off today. But when he puts the whole package together, Boy, is he going to be a lot of fun to watch and dangerous for defenses. So Tennessee with their third rushing touchdown from their young quarterback. Ball stands, extra point up, and it is good. And with only 1.43 to go in the third quarter, Iowa's in big trouble down 21 to nothing. Tennessee player got hurt on the extra point try. Never want to see that. Hmm. Parker Ball, who ordinarily wears number 65, wearing number 11 on special teams. Senior offensive lineman. Looks pretty innocent. Not, not really much there. Hmm. So hopefully he's going to be okay. Tennessee, 21 point lead against one of the lowest scoring offenses. I mean, Iowa averaged 16 points a game this year. So this would be an unprecedented comeback for them. Their offense. Still stuck under 100 total yards for the game. We're almost in the fourth quarter. All right, that's a decent sign. Parker gets up. A 
Well, this, this particular touchdown for Tennessee was all set up by the defense, the special teams that put Iowa in a bad field position spot, and then the play by Pierce. Well, James Pierce was getting close to Deacon Hill a couple times throughout the game. Finally, with the Hawkeyes backed up, the game-changing defensive end for the Vols, able to get in there and make a play. And then the young quarterback showing off his legs once again and why he was such a highly recruited player to Knoxville. It has been a lot of fun to watch today. Hardly played all year his true freshman season. And first start in this bowl game. And he and Tennessee have a three touchdown lead. We've heard Rocky Top a bunch. It's going to be interesting to see the approach, the Hawkeyes offense, what they come out with here on this series. This is not where they like to play games. They, they can't play games down 21-0, down three possessions. Let's see if they spread out the field a little bit and let quarterback Deacon Hill try to get into rhythm in the passing game. Now their backup quarterback, Iowa, Marco Linez, true freshman, hasn't played this year, but at some point you wonder if Iowa, I know they don't usually do it, but at some point you consider just trying to spark your offense. Your season's winding down. Deacon Hill has not played very well here today. That kickoff is a booming touchback through the back of the end zone. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. All right, so we'll see. No quarterback change. Deacon Hill comes back on the field. Six of 15, 47 yards, an interception, and a fumble. Well, that Cade McNamara injury early in the season going down with an ACL just really hurt the Hawkeyes. And then you have tight end Luke Lachey go down, tight end Eric All. And this offense just has not been able to find their footing since. Now you take, there's Cade watching from the sideline. Deacon Hill's 20 passes and rushes, and almost all those are the sacks that he's taken. Net yards on 20 times he's either thrown or run the ball, 17 yards. He's running it here. He's adding to that total. And he is tough to bring. I mean, he's a big kid. Spun around. He gets about he, nine he on the first down scramble. Football down the field. Tennessee doing a great job of covering up the wide receivers. Deacon Hill doing a good job of finding some positive yards and getting the drive started. And they did spot him for 10 and a first down. Back to throw the ball. Ball batted in the air and lands incomplete. Big old Omari Thomas was trying to find it as it hung up in the air. Look for a minute, it looked like he was going to go get it. So you what, Thomas is just a beast Second inside of that defensive tackle position. 320 pounds. Gets his hand up for the deflection. He's played a great ball game today. You know, the Tennessee coaches could not say more good things about him. We told you they already told us they think he might be president of the United States someday. So a great student. Cares deeply about his classroom work. Everybody on this team loves number 21. Second and 10. Pressure coming. Hill dumps it short, and that pass completed. And the tight end dragging the defender for about nine and a half yards. Let's go down to Kim. We talk about Thomas, you guys, and he has really been such a committed player to this program. From his position coach leaving the day he got there to head coach Jeremy Pruitt soon following after that, Thomas stayed. And he told me that he really credits his parents, specifically his dad, Romarcus. He played a big part in his reason to stay, telling him, listen, when you have to go through adversity, you have to try to figure your way, figure your way through it all, not try to just leave like everyone else and fight your way through. He has been loving this program and he does have a very interesting superstition y'all he has blue raspberry minute made before every single game apparently he had an incredible middle school middle game because of that so he has not changed that since minute made is his go-to by the way he helps stop iowa going for it on third and short now it's fourth and a half yard and iowa down 21 points you gotta go if you know it's four down territory i don't like the qb sneak on third down i think that's a chance to maybe take a boot Kind of a naked action. Get your quarterback out there. Try to find the chunk there. If you know you're going to go for it on fourth down. So they'll 
get organized. You figure they got to go right on fourth down when we start quarter number four. 21 nothing Tennessee. You're watching the Cheese It Citrus Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Hey, fans, you know we're three quarters of the way through. The Cheese It Citrus Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. We start the fourth quarter. 21 nothing Tennessee. Fourth down. Iowa's got to go. They're going to hand the ball off left side. Run, they'll get the first down. And several extra yards, Jazzy and Patterson. First to 10, Iowa. Just pure, classic Iowa power football to pick up the fresh set. Great job by the Hawkeyes. Offensive line, their tight ends capturing that end. And the first down. Dave Judy Lally is down. I don't know if he's cramping or got banged up on that play. Good run by the young guy. Lally made the tackle. Boy, Iowa desperately needed that first out. Down 21 nothing already. I mean, look, we've documented all game long. Their offense struggles this year, struggles today. Their chances of coming from behind in this four, they're going to need some help, some mistakes from Tennessee, but to have any shot to come from behind they had to have that one no question and, and listen there's some goofy things that happen in bowl games they're coming back down 21-0 late excuse me at the beginning of the four gonna be tough but if you're gonna do it it has to start on this drive you gotta get points so you gotta get a touchdown here and now you're right around midfield Beacon Hill has had a rough day that quarterback and remember Lally is the best quarterback for Tennessee so with him going off the field if there was ever time to take a shot you have two backup corners playing outside for the balls it's now or never for Iowa they haven't tested the young guys basically all game they really haven't even tried from the shotgun that throws intercepted Pierce down the sideline touchdown Strip sack and now a pick six for the sophomore star James Pierce Jr. 27 nothing Tennessee. Pierce in zone coverage just reading the quarterback's eyes. Does a great job of breaking on the football as soon as Deacon Hill lets it go. It's a throw that Hill should never throw. He doesn't see Pierce drop it in zone coverage, or maybe he just thought he could fire it in there. But James Pierce makes him pay. I'll tell you what, this sophomore is going to be a lot of fun to watch in the coming years. Third quarterback turnover, two interceptions plus the fumble. It's 28-0 all Tennessee. That guy can play. The fifth Tennessee defensive touchdown this year. And that might do it for Iowa's chances in this Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. The pick six for the Volunteers, up four touchdowns. The college football playoff semifinals. New Year's Day on ESPN. Countdown now for the first of those two semifinal games. Alabama out of the SEC involved in the first one at the Rose Bowl, taking on Michigan out of the Big Ten. Same conference matchup here. Wolverines sure are hoping it goes better for them in Pasadena than it has for Iowa. All Tennessee, 28-0, 14 15 to go. James Pierce Jr. just finished off a pick six interception return for a 51 yard touchdown I think we're gonna get a quarterback change coming up for Iowa looked like Marco Linez was getting loose on the sidelines volunteers will boom that one deep let's take a look at that interception one more time Brock yeah going back to that pick six this is just a play that the quarterback has to see listen at the top of your screen when you have your best pass rusher James Pierce what looks like in dropping position you have to confirm that he is not rushing the passer as a quarterback you can't just assume that although he is Tennessee's best pass rusher he's coming great play by Pierce by dropping into zone coverage reading the quarterback's eyes to play Deacon Hill he needed to see the defender well, you heard a cheer from the Iowa fans. Now look, we're, we're not piling on Deacon Hill, but trying to see something else. 
something different. For the first time, the true freshman, Marco Lainez, is in the game. He can run. Part of his skill set, he takes off on his first play in his college career. And he gets 10 yards and an Iowa first down. He had never taken a snap before that one. Good high school career, Princeton, New Jersey, true freshman. Yeah, and great first snap. Nothing open downfield. It's a light box, just a five-man box by the balls. Quarterback doing a great job taking advantage of it and getting some positive yards in the first down. So getting a chance to play here, just like Tennessee using a true freshman quarterback. Linez throws incomplete, trying to hit his tight end. Ostringa, second and ten coming up. One thing, Kurt Ferentz is pretty stubborn as a head coach, and this has been the case going back a long time. Blowouts in either direction. Typically, the starting quarterback stays in. He's not. Some coaches believe, hey, if a game gets out of hand, let's get our backup in there, get him some game reps. That's not the way Iowa does it. And listen, I can appreciate that. L listen, he, he's saying just because the game is going haywire, there's a reason why that guy is the starting quarterback. He stands behind his guys, but at some point, sometimes you need to make a change. Pressure comes after the low snap. The line is improv, gets the first down to midfield, then ducks out of bounds. That play looked like it was going to be a disaster, and he gets 17 yards. Listen, I've, I've been in both positions as a quarterback. I've been the starter in Polden. and I've been the backup that's come in. And sometimes the backup quarterback is just able to spark the offense. That's what you're seeing right now with Linez and his legs. You feel for Deacon Hill. He's put in so much time for this football team. He's won a lot of games. Unfortunately, he just didn't have the juice today. That was the longest play of the game for Iowa's offense right there. And across midfield only for the second time today. Iowa. Now a screen set up and he missed him. Well, they had it. They had it set up for a nice gain. Kamari Moulton was out there and Linez overshot him. Oh, that one's going to sting for the Hawkeyes. Moulton was wide open. There wasn't a single defender around to make a tackle. Great play call by Brian Ferentz there trying to set up the halfback screen. Who knows? Maybe a little adrenaline pumping through Marco oh, yeah. Linez. Oh, yeah. Lots of it. Those touch passes might be a little bit of a challenge. Second and ten. More pressure. Now turning it upfield, cutting it back across the middle. Linez, another Iowa first down. It's an extra dimension for this offense that Deacon Hill just doesn't have. Well, you mentioned the juice that's running through Linez's veins right now, and you see it paying off. Big defensive tackle Simmons getting in there early for Tennessee, causing havoc. But Marco Linez just keeping the wits about him, keeping his eyes downfield, protecting the football. Great to see the young kid come in and have some success. Tennessee trying to rush an extra defender out there. They were short a player. Now a little inside screen and well defended. First completion for Linez, but it loses a yard. Jordan Thomas is kind of a do-everything player. Plays some safety, plays some hybrid linebacker for the balls. Thrust into starting action with Tamarian McDonald. Usually the starting nickelback transferring to Ole Miss. Thomas getting his first start today for the balls. A couple of key defenders for Tennessee heading across the conference to play in Oxford next year. That hurts balls fans a little bit. Second down and 11. Backup quarterback, though, has the Hawkeyes on the move. Now the play blown dead. Did they call timeout? First charge timeout. Iowa. Play clock was winding down. They used the timeout. 28-0. But Line has given the Hawkeyes a little bit of a spark. The Cheese It Citrus Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Please reset the game clock. The Cheese It Citrus Bowl on ABC is brought to you by Cheese It, official sponsor of the college football playoff. And the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Well, you get the true all-time greats have played in this bowl over many, many years. There's so much history involved in the Citrus Bowl. Former MVPs, Peyton Manning, Plaxico Burris, Matthew Stafford, Alshon, Jeffrey. Who's going to be the MVP today? Could be the true freshman, Nico. Diavaliava 
playing his first game, first start, had a little action during the regular season. And he's got all the Vols fans peering off into the future, wondering, hmm, how good can we be with this guy? Future's bright. Second and 11. Meanwhile, for Iowa, at least something with Marco Linez, the backup quarterback, moving the ball a little bit better. On second down and long in the pocket, pressured, scrambling, and going down. Well, those pass rush situations, Tennessee is starting to get after the quarterbacks. Eason, Harrison. We knew coming into this football game, the Hawkeyes offensive line, they were going to have to take care of those big, strong, physical defensive tackles for the Vols. And in this second half, that defensive front for Tennessee, they've really taken control of this football game. Fifth sack. Plus, Iowa just doesn't, they don't have separators on the outside, so not able to take advantage of the inexperienced secondary for Tennessee today. Third down and long, they'll hand the ball off for a short game. I think hoping to take Tennessee off guard and maybe, you know, pick up half of it, something like that, but the balls are ready. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's really a call I don't quite understand. You're down 28 to 0. At this point, I mean, what else could go wrong? Give yourself a chance. Take the ball down the field. Try to get half back through the air. Get yourself in fourth and manageable. Not many calls on the play sheet at 4th and 15. No. So we'll see if Linez maybe buy some time, scramble. Try to stay away from James Pierce. So there he goes. Gets away. Linez is going to get there. Up and over. Some tough guy running from the true freshman for an Iowa first down. What a play. A true freshman Marco Linez. Great recognition on his behalf. He navigates the pocket, runs forward, which the great quarterbacks do. He's able to pick up a huge first down for the Hawkeyes. Had to get away from that D lineman, almost didn't, but just enough burst and power to avoid the sack and then get 16 yards. So first down, ball battered backwards. Man, knocked down Elijah Herring. He's had a nice game. He's just a sophomore. Yeah, Herring a sophomore, Pierce a sophomore. Yeah, Elijah Heron coming from the middle linebacker position, drifting down late at the snap of the ball, rushing. No one gets hands on him. Tough situation for Linez. Not many throws are going to get around. Big number 44. No. Player was down and injured, a Tennessee player. I think that's Bryson Eason. Hopefully he's all right. We'll step aside and be back to Orlando right after this. To celebrate the college football community who's feeling the cheesiest. This is the thing I was holding at halftime. I couldn't get the clasp off, or otherwise I would have worn it. Cheese it collaborated with celebrity jeweler Leo. Ca yeah, see, I, I mean, I just didn't have enough time to get it set up to wear. He's designed pieces for Joe Burrow, Justin Fields. NFL stars the cheesiest chain. I mean, it's made of gold and diamonds. It's not a piece of plastic, that thing. Oh, and there's some serious weight to it. There's an armed guard who's walking the thing around. Handoff on second down. And just not a lot of room for Kamari Moulton. James Pierce, once again, making another play for the Tennessee defense. It's third down. Well, Iowa's offense had seven first downs all game until this drive. Marco Lina as the true freshman's come in. They've had four first downs on this drive alone. Yeah, he's sparked this offense. Hasn't done much through the air, but with his legs, he's already rushed for almost 50 yards. Picked up a couple huge first downs. See if the Hawkeyes find a way to get some points on the board. Get that goose egg gone. Third and nine. Under nine minutes to go. Lainez, just a design run for him. And it's going to be fourth down once again. I'd expect Tennessee to bring some sort of pressure package here on fourth down. Test the young quarterback, see his knowledge of his protection, see if he can get rid of the football quick. Fourth and six, they've converted a couple times today including 4th and 15 just a moment ago. 
Pressure comes. A throw incomplete. Well, I think he figured out where to go with the ball. Just did not deliver it on target, and Iowa turns the ball over on downs. Well, Nico Regaini did a great job of winning the one-on-one -on -one matchup in the slot. It was man-to-man -man coverage. Just kind of a quick angle route up top. Unfortunately, Lina is a little off target, puts the football behind Regaini. Otherwise, there was a chance for a big play. I think he did the first part of what you were talking about. Identify the pressure, nowhere to go with the ball. His guy was open, but he took a big hit at the end of that one. It was excellent, but big Tyree West is bearing down on him, and that's just something a young quarterback's going to have to learn. Sometimes there's going to be guys unblocked in those got-to-have-it situations. Still have to be accurate with the football. Feels like it's been a while since Tennessee's offense has been on the field. They had pick six. Here's a throw. Catch. Completion to the far sideline. Gain of seven to Squirrel White, who you figure is going to be a favorite target next year for the Amaliava. Pass to White. Gain of seven. Second down and three. Hand off on second and three. That'll be a Tennessee first down. Cameron Selden. They were raving about that guy. Yeah, and rightfully so. We've seen some great things out of Selden today. The thing I like most about the true freshman running back, one cut. He gets vertical, picks up some extra yards. Play fake. And a throw. That one caught. Coming back to the football. Caleb Webb. Six-yard completion there. You know, and the thing about Selden, listed at six foot two, 222 pounds, we heard that he ran a 10-400 meter in high school. So with that great size and physicality, he also presents game-breaking speed. Well, Comes from that. Tidewater, Virginia, but a very small high school. He played quarterback, he played defensive end, he played, I, I think he was the place kicker at time. <laughs> he did everything for his high school team. Did so it all. He, he really didn't learn the nuances of the running back position. He's got all the physical tools to be a really good one. And off there, uh, that was a demonstration of some of those tools. First down, Tennessee. We talk about Selden. We just talked about Squirrel White, the wide receiver. Brew McCoy comes back to school and foregoes the NFL draft. The Tennessee Vols certainly know they found their quarterback of the future. There's some great pieces here for a great season next year. Couple yards on first down. Well, by the way, our next ESPN NHL matchup Thursday night, 7 Eastern, two classic franchises. The Bruins host the Penguins. Coverage drops with the point at 6 Eastern over on ESPN2. That's Thursday. Tennessee going to take their time here, run as much clock as possible. The ball game in control. Well, if Iowa doesn't get the ball back, and maybe they will one more time. And off, and a big hole, Sampson on the move, cutting it back to the sideline, all the way down to the 20, Dylan Sampson. Well over 100 yards for the game, adding to his total. That was 31 more there. What a great pull by big number 54 coming from left to right. Dylan Sampson's not even touched until he's 20 yards down the field. Great job by the offensive front. It's another carry here. Just a gain of two. I mean, you think about it from Iowa's perspective, what could have been this year, one of their all-time greatest defensive teams, one of the best defenses in the country, but the Big Ten Championship held Michigan to, what, 230 yards total, a playoff, the number one seed in the playoffs that are starting here in a matter of minutes. Yeah. Zips one in there, completion, and... Touchdown, Tennessee! McCallan Castles, the tight end. Iamaliava put it right on him from 18 yards out. What a great play design by Josh Heupel. Dialing it up in the red zone. Keep an eye on 34 right here, and then you're going to see the clear-out route. Perfect play call against zone coverage. No one there for Castles. McCallan Castles, who transferred in from UC Davis and a consistent tight end for the Vols all season. Love the play design by Josh Heupel. Touchdown stands, eight plays, 78 yards. And the former Aggie from UC Davis, a long way from 
Davis, California, into the end zone. The extra point, up and good. Wow, what a statement by Tennessee. This is an Iowa team that won its division in the Big Ten, played for a Big Ten championship, just getting taken by in the woodshed by Tennessee. And the true freshman quarterback, yeah, he's good. Nothing Tennessee over Iowa in this cheese it citrus bowl or Capital One Bowl Mania. Well, tune into the ESPN app for the Capital One post game immediately following the game. You're guaranteed to hear at least a few notes of Rocky Top. We know that. Been all balls here today. Tennessee fans having a good time in Orlando. And I think part of the, we've talked about it a lot today, Brock, but part of it is not just celebrating a bowl win. It'll be their ninth win, 20th win in the last two seasons. They've got their program turned around. It's also looking ahead to next year and dreaming about the possibilities watching their true freshman play as well as he has to well, listen Nico Iamaleava was billed up to be this five-star highly talented guy can he be the guy that gets Tennessee to a national title we saw today he put the balls on his back four total touchdowns three on the ground one through the air he was worth the price of admission and so much fun to watch he was in control the moment wasn't too big for him. He operated the offense to perfection. Can't wait to see what he does throughout his career in Knoxville. So we're going to make him our Capital One player of the game. He had a lot of help on both sides of the ball, but I think the point you just made is the important one. He stepped in there like he's been running this offense his whole life. Is his first career start. Has hardly played all year. And... Tennessee scored more points than anybody scored against Iowa all year. They previously given up 31 to Penn State. That was the most they allowed all season. And trust me, he does not, you know, silence to the expectations. He knows what people in Knoxville and Tennessee alumni and fans want out of him. When you start getting the name Peyton Manning tossed around with yours when you're 18 years old, there's high expectations, and he certainly met them today. Marco Linez in there, the freshman quarterback second stringer for Iowa It'll be third down coming up for the Hawkeyes Another player down Jordan Thomas for Tennessee holding that left ankle left leg <laughs> looks like a leg whip situation yeah hate to see it you definitely don't want to get anybody hurt with four minutes to go in a 35-point bowl blowout. Don't ever want to see anybody hurt, but Jordan Thomas, or you figure he's going to be a big part of Tennessee's defense next year. They have some holes to fill in the secondary. That'll be one of the concerns. Sophomore from Montgomery, and he gets up. Yeah, Jordan Thomas played a great game. Today, stepping in for Tamari and McDonald, who's transferred to Ole Miss. Three of the five day one starters in the secondary for the Vols were not available in this game due to the transfer portal. A lot of young players stepped up well. You kind of figure secondary. All right, Tennessee needs to address that, get some help there. Josh Heupel also, I think, could probably stand to find one more playmaker on the outside, you know, wide receiver to help his young quarterback. You got Squirrel White, you got a very talented running back room. Yeah, and I think the biggest question there is, does Brew McCoy, the wide receiver who was injured earlier in the season for Tennessee, does he come back to school or elect to go to the NFL draft? That could be that wide receiver piece that you're talking about. Third and four for Iowa. Linez is going to give it on a jet sweep. And Brown spins away from one Tennessee defender, but not a second and a third. Got two, maybe three, fourth down coming up. Okay, somebody's got one of those you know, that will cheese it chain. It doesn't look like the, the real deal. I mean, maybe it's real. Maybe it's a miniature version of the one we saw. There's no armed guard around that one, though. Fourth and one. Minus. Play fake. Throws. Incomplete. Through too low. And so Tennessee will get the ball back once again.
the day's over now for Iamaliava. Gaston Moore, who's put in a lot of time with Josh Heupel, with Joey Halsley. The offensive coordinator at Tennessee started his career at UCF here in Orlando. And Moore will run the ball on his first play from scrimmage. Been around a while. The junior from Hilton Head. Yeah, you mentioned starting his career at UCF under Josh Heupel, talking with the coaching staff this week. They say, listen, he's like another coach on the field. He knows this system as well as anyone. And it's been kind of a, a side story, not the most important part of this week, but Josh Heupel got a chance to come back here. Tennessee practiced at UCF. Josh won a lot of games over there on the UCF campus. Third down, and a running play stacked up. We'll see. I think they did get enough for the first down. Khalifa Keith now carrying the ball for Tennessee. Under two and a half minutes to go. One more first down, and Tennessee can start to just take a knee. Llewellyn going up high on the quarterback. Personal foul, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Any contact to the head or neck area of a quarterback's personal foul every time. Easy call for the officials. Nico grabbed his helmet just in case. When it's a penalty that forces the helmet off, you can stay in the game. That's correct. If your helmet comes off without a penalty, for at least one play, you got to come out. Well, and with the game under two minutes here and a first down, Tennessee can just take three straight knees if they want. Yeah. Hand off. Keith. Well, for Iowa, some soul searching. You know, you win 10 games, you hate to have this taste in your mouth at the end of a special year. But the offense just was a disaster this year. The defense, everything else about this season, they'll have a new coordinator. Kate McNamara hopefully will be healthy and ready to go next year. That's exactly right. You, you have a terrible taste in your mouth. Not a good way to finish the season. Back-to-back -back shutouts, a Big Ten title game. And then today, well, you mentioned it. You get your starting quarterback back. You get Luke Lachey back at tight end. New offensive coordinator. A lot of great pieces coming back on defense. Be another big year for the Hawkeyes next season. Straight ahead run on second down. So it'll be third down here. Tennessee at least allowing Gaston Moore to run some plays. No knee yet. But for Tennessee, an offseason of getting that freshman quarterback even more and more comfortable in the system and then letting him go. Fun to watch him today. Throw, incomplete. Clock will stop. Fourth down, 38 seconds to go. Interesting decision. I do understand what Josh Heifel's doing. You look at your quarterback, Gaston Moore. He's been with you since UCF, transferred up to Tennessee. These are guys that put in the same amount of hours in the weight room, in the film room, all that time as the starters. They don't get to play much. So when they do get an opportunity, you want to give them some love. Let them have some fun out there, but also the game is well, well within hand, and you have an opportunity to run out the clock. So fourth down. Iowa jumped. Free play. Incomplete. They're going to get another shot at it. I don't think Iowa likes what Tennessee's doing here, bringing an all-out blitz on that last play. Trying to shut down the drive for the Vols. Offside, defense number 95. Bellies half the distance to go. Remains fourth down. All right, so not an automatic first down, obviously. Still be fourth and goal. Not fourth and goal, fourth. They could get a first down at about the two, so fourth and a yard, yard and a half.
Yeah, I don't love this move by the Vols right now. They had an opportunity to run out the clock. I get it. You got some backups in there. They've worked hard. They've earned reps, but there is also a sportsmanship element of this game. Well within hand, 35 to zero. They'll hand it off. And they won't get the touchdown. They will get a first down at this point. Take a knee. I hope so. Great, great stop, though, by the Hawkeyes. All right, he ran the ball, hand the play sheet back, take a knee, and celebrate a Cheez It Citrus Bowl victory. The bucket of Cheez Its on Josh Heupel's head. Hey, it's a lot warmer than the, the liquid celebration. <laughs> Joe Milton in there with his head coach. That will be the final play. And for Tennessee, a glimpse of the future and a present day victory to celebrate in Orlando. She's a Citrus Bowl champion. Second straight bowl win for the Balls in the state of Florida. Nine wins after 11 last year. Tennessee's got their program. Maybe not all the way back to national championship contender yet, but they're on their way. No question. Josh Heupel has the foundation set in Knoxville for a great run next year. And I tell you what, there's a lot of star players and a lot of excitement for this Tennessee Volunteers team, and rightfully so. Winning his two-year span in two decades for this Tennessee program and capped off this year with a 35 nothing win the winning head coach down with Kayla well coach congratulations on another bowl win here today Nico 12 of 19 for with his performance yeah, in his first I thought, Christmas. I thought he did a great job of just controlling everything. Uh, first time starting, um, just the huddle, the mechanics, uh, operations, controlling our run game, protections, all of it. Uh, did a fantastic job, made a bunch of plays uh, throughout the course of it with his arm and feet. Special player. All three phases showed up for you guys here today. Here's the man of the hour. I'll get to the three phases in a second, but Nico, when you envisioned getting your first career start, I mean, man, did you think it would come out this way? Yeah, I think I've always had confidence in this team. I knew we was going to go out there and take care of business. And, um, yeah, I'm glad we came out to win and got our series a ring and, you know, a bowl one. So I'm happy for that. You told me before this, when you decided to come to Tennessee, Coach here played a big part in that. Him going through it himself yeah. as a player. Sir. What does he show you about the future of what you can do here? Everything, man. Um, you know, since I've got here, you know, I've gotten nothing but love from the coaching staff. And uh, really, the culture here has, just, has changed. And, um, you know, I'm happy to be a part of it. And, you know, it, you know, it's the start of our 2024 year. So going into it, you know, I think we've got a good mindset. I know you're not surprised by this guy. No. But what impressed you most about his performance today? I just think as, as a young player, uh, the moment, uh, nothing's too big for him. He, he's very in control and uh, does a great job relating to all the guys at every position, every unit, offense, defense. Um, he's a dynamic leader already as a young guy. Uh, really pleased with his poise and, and playmaking ability today. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. All right, thanks. You can see why his teammates like him so much. No, they really do. He is the future of this Tennessee program. That's for sure. The shirts, the hats are coming on. 35 nothing. That's Tennessee's final margin of victory. Congratulations to the Balls, the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl champions. We'll come back with the Capital One post-game trophy ceremony live right here after this message.